NASA unveiled pictures from a new space telescope capturing the deepest images of the universe anyone has ever seen. When the James Webb Space Telescope locked its instruments onto the red dwarf star Proxima Centauri, 4.24 light years from Earth, astronomers hoped for data that might edge us closer to answering one of the most profound questions humanity has ever asked. Are we alone in the universe? Proxima Centauri b, an exoplanet orbiting within the habitable zone of its parent star, had long been a prime candidate for harboring life due to its Earth-like mass and location. Yet even the most optimistic scientists did not anticipate what Webb's spectroscopic instruments would uncover. Not only did the telescope detect complex atmospheric signatures, but it revealed compelling signs of biological activity, evidence that life may already exist on our cosmic neighbor. Before we start, hit the like and subscribe buttons for more exclusive news. The breakthrough began with a series of infrared spectroscopic observations using the near-infrared spectrograph, NIRSPEC, and the mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, aboard the James Webb Space Telescope. These tools allowed scientists to peer into the atmospheric composition of Proxima b with an unprecedented level of detail. It wasn't just the presence of carbon dioxide or water vapor, gases which might be geologically or chemically induced, that raised eyebrows. What startled researchers was the detection of methane alongside oxygen and ozone in sustained quantities coexisting in a dynamic balance. This trio of gases on Earth is largely sustained through biological processes. Their simultaneous presence, especially the stability of methane in an oxygen-rich atmosphere, is nearly impossible to explain through abiotic means alone. In addition to these chemical markers, Webb detected seasonal fluctuations in the gas compositions, resembling the carbon cycle seen on Earth. A biosphere exhaling and inhaling in rhythm with planetary seasons was the implication. An atmospheric dance suggesting living organisms were driving chemical processes. The data suggested that these changes weren't just occasional anomalies or one-time measurements. They followed a pattern, regular and sustained over multiple orbital periods, strengthening the case that the observed gases were biologically replenished. The detection didn't stop there. Webb's sensitive photometric capabilities uncovered unusual reflectance patterns on Proxima b's surface. There were differences in albedo, how much light the planet reflects, between different regions and time frames, suggestive of changing surface cover. Some researchers interpreted these shifts as consistent with vegetative or microbial mats blooming and receding with light availability, similar to phytoplankton blooms in Earth's oceans or the growth and decay of vegetation across terrestrial biomes. While speculative, this idea gained traction when the light curves indicated red edge signatures, a phenomenon on Earth linked to photosynthetic life. This specific reflectance, most often seen in chlorophyll-bearing organisms, might be produced by alien equivalents adapting to Proxima Centauri's red-shifted light. Another monumental revelation came from temperature and pressure readings, derived from transit spectroscopy and modeled via radiative convective equilibrium. The data pointed to a planet that, while not identical to Earth, possessed habitable surface conditions. Temperatures ranging from 5 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius across a broad equatorial band. The atmosphere exhibited cloud cover and a water cycle, hinting at precipitation, potential bodies of liquid water, and even storms. For the first time, the vision of a living alien world was no longer confined to science fiction. There was now tangible, physical evidence. A climate capable of supporting life, biosignatures difficult to explain away, and surface variability hinting at biological phenomena. None of these indicators on their own would constitute proof of life, but together they created an overwhelming mosaic of biological possibility. Statistically speaking, the chances of all these features, biosignature gases, seasonal variability, red edge reflectance, and an active water cycle appearing simultaneously on a lifeless planet are astronomically low. The community began cautiously, then with growing confidence to conclude that Webb had found something extraordinary, an alien biosphere on Proxima b. The implications of such a discovery stretch far beyond astronomy. From a biological perspective, it challenges the uniqueness of Earth-based life. If life arose independently on Proxima b, a rocky world circling a turbulent red dwarf star, it suggests that the conditions necessary for biology are more widespread than previously believed. Life, it seems, may not be a cosmic rarity. It might be a universal imperative, emerging wherever the ingredients and environmental catalysts align. This revolutionizes how life is understood, 
hinting at a biocentric universe where biology is not an accident, but a fundamental outcome of planetary chemistry. For astrobiologists, this was the ultimate vindication. The field, once regarded as speculative and fringe, had finally received its crown jewel. Researchers had spent decades debating the right combination of elements and conditions that could give rise to alien ecosystems. Proxima b, in all its subtle complexity, had delivered a living laboratory for those theories. The findings allowed scientists to construct new evolutionary models for non-Earth biology. How might life evolve under a red sun, with its frequent solar flares and less visible light? How do organisms protect themselves from ultraviolet and X-ray radiation in such an environment? The web data hinted that Proxima b's biosphere might have found novel strategies, perhaps subsurface colonies, biological UV shields, or highly reflective pigments that doubled as radiation filters. The discovery also reframed humanity's understanding of its place in the cosmos. For millennia, philosophers and scientists alike had pondered the possibility of alien life, with answers always just out of reach. Now evidence pointed decisively toward its existence. In that realization lay a deep existential shift. Earth was no longer the singular cradle of life. It was one among many. The concept of isolation, of being a lone blue speck in a dark void, had been irrevocably broken. Moreover, the discovery reshaped the philosophical and theological discourse around life and existence. Many belief systems, both ancient and contemporary, had long considered Earth to be the unique stage of life, the presence of life elsewhere, especially so near in cosmic terms, urged a re-examination of these views. What did it mean for humanity's purpose, for morality, for the trajectory of civilization, if life was not a miracle confined to one world, but a thread in a vast cosmic fabric? The technological implications were also profound. With proof of life only 4.24 light years away, the imperative to develop faster propulsion systems surged to the forefront. Breakthrough Starshot, once a speculative project proposing microprobes traveling at 20% the speed of light, now seemed not just worthwhile but essential. A robotic mission to Proxima b became a matter of when, not if. Investment in cryogenic shielding, radiation-hardened electronics, and AI-driven autonomous probes skyrocketed. For the first time, interstellar travel wasn't science fiction. It was an engineering challenge with a very specific destination. Scientific disciplines across the spectrum felt the tremors. Chemistry, geology, and climatology gained entirely new fields of inquiry. Xenochemistry, exogeology, and exoclimatology focused not on hypothetical models, but on actual data streaming from a living alien world. Instruments originally designed for distant planetary characterization were recalibrated to probe the fine details of Proxima b's atmosphere and surface, with new generations of sensors already in conceptual stages. Laboratories around the world shifted focus towards synthesizing Proxima-like conditions to study extremophile behavior and simulate potential biospheres. The social and cultural ramifications were equally explosive. Literature, film, art, and music began absorbing the Proxima B revelation into their themes. Artists imagined the landscapes and life forms that might exist there, while storytellers envisioned first contact scenarios, ethical dilemmas, and the consequences of human expansion. The shared human imagination had always pointed skyward, but now it had a direction, a name, and a life-infused world to anchor its dreams. Despite its proximity, Proxima B remains a remote world, a place humanity cannot yet reach but now intimately knows through the eyes of the Webb telescope. Its atmosphere breathes in a recognizable rhythm. Its skies swirl with clouds that likely rain on landscapes we cannot yet see. And most astonishingly, something on that planet seems to be alive. Something not of Earth, but no longer just of speculation either. This makes Proxima b the most important object in the known universe, a second genesis point that proves the cosmos is fertile ground for life. The legacy of the James Webb Space Telescope was instantly and irreversibly transformed. It was already a marvel of human engineering, a successor to Hubble, capable of probing the earliest galaxies and decoding the atmospheres of exoplanets. But with this single achievement, Webb had done something no other machine had ever accomplished. It had peered across space and time and touched the essence of life beyond Earth. It didn't just observe, it revealed, and what it revealed has reshaped science, philosophy, and imagination forever. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, could you leave your comments below and tell us? What are your thoughts on James Webb finding life on Proxima b? What's next? We want to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you next time.